Well, welcome. This is Pantry Party episode number four, and uh, I am enjoying this tremendously. I hope you are too. Uh, here's why it's been extra cool is not only are we really looking in someone's pantry, fridge, and freezer in a non-judgmental way, but we're also getting to learn about the people who are the guests, right? Like what they do in the world and just, it's just been very awesome. And you know, so far I've had all boss babes on. And so in addition to sneaking a peek in their pantry, you know, getting to learn boss babes in the world and what they're up to is really actually been very inspiring. So. You know, since this is my fourth one, I am a pro at, uh, at this. I've got the disco ball going like a party. Uh, I've got the whole uh, neon sign that says good vibes over there. Uh, and now I'm just waiting for our guest who, uh, her name is Rosie, and she is a major boss babe. Uh, she contributes to Forbes. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, and I'm actually interested. She's a pal, gal pal of mine. Um, and I don't know all that she does in this world. So um, I'm going to be very interested to hear about her um, coaching and what she does and who she does it for. And then, of course, after I meet her and hear about her, I'm uh, going to make her take us to our pantry. Uh, what's been crazy is that in addition to this week going gangbusters with uh, Pantry Party, uh, next week I already have the entire week lined up. Um, oh, Rosie is here. Uh, I see Rosie. So now, Rosie, on your screen, it'll just say, hey, uh, connect with Dawn, click that, and then I'll let you in. Uh, so I am super pumped. Um, oh, yeah, there she is, girl. Good job. We're, we're rolling with this. The... Welcome to Party Pantry. Pantry Party. Party Pantry. Pantry Party. Um, hey, good to see you, girl. How are you? Good. Can you, I, you can hear me okay? I can hear you. Yes. Yes. And I like to start this. You know, every single time we've been doing a pantry party, uh, I'm like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> One of these days. Totally. I think by episode 10, I'm pretty sure that uh, all of my kinks are going to be out. I'm going to be totally easy breezy. Uh, so Rosie, um, is there a way that you could take us to a more lit area, like go stand yeah. by a window? I'm laughing because, well, no, I could probably just do this. Um, oh, there I she is. I have a light I could use if you want me to grab it. No, my trick of the trade here is find a window. Okay, so this is my gloriousness. So there's a window right on the other side of me. Ah, how about maybe this? Oh, yeah. See, there you go. Is there a window right there? Yeah. Well, it's behind me. If you wait, no, one it's second. in front of you. I need the window in front of you. Right, it's behind the camera. Oh, it's behind the camera. It. Okay, fine. I can see you better. I can see you better, which I think is good. Just because you're such a light in this world, I feel like we need to uh, see all of your glory. Uh, Rosie, I was telling everyone that we're gal pals. Yes. And that I know a bit about what you do. I'm always impressed when I see like Forbes pop up and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's my friend. Uh -huh. Like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, I know she's coaching because your handle is at Inner Brilliance Coaching. And so I'm right. like, so I know that she coaches. Would you consider yourself a business coach, a life coach? Like, tell us first, before we go into your pantry, who is Rosie? Sure. Thanks, Don. Um, Basically, I'm a certified life and career coach. Oh. And I say that because when uh, I look at career coaching, for me, I have to consider your whole life. You're a whole person. So even though we can focus on that if you want, I think it's important to also look at your health, your financial situation, your partnerships, relationships, because we can find you the best career that you would love, but if you're um, not getting supported by people in your life or you're not feeling good about your health, I don't think it matters how great of a career we find at that point, right? Preach, so, preach. Right? And so I basically like to do that, but I also look at other areas of your life. So I say a life coach too because of that. I also was in advertising and marketing for 18 years. So I can bring a lot of that to the table in the sense that I've gone through my own career transition because I am – a coach now, but I've also had teams and I've worked with people. I've had people report to me. I've obviously had to manage up. So I feel like clients like the fact that I was in corporate America and I can also support them in a really specific way beyond coaching. 
So, so here's what I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you a holistic business mm-hmm. and life coach because you look at the whole person and the whole picture. What yeah. do you do with Forbes? I, you know what? I, I don't know why this obsession I have with this, but like, what do you do with them? Well, I'm glad you're obsessed with that. Yes. That's a good thing because I spend a lot of time with that. Yes. Um, basically, I'm a contributor to their coaches council and I write um, articles for them sometimes. But you might have also seen recently that I was quoted in Forbes, which is like such a shock to me, Um, even though I had set an intention around creating awareness around a really important topic to me, which is hearing loss, because I wear hearing aids, which I don't know know that. No, right. I don't know that. Don and I are friends. We don't always see each other that often, but several years ago, I got hearing aids. And I think a lot of people don't know that I wear them. So they're on right now. And I was worried. I'm like, I hope I can hear her, but it's working fine. And it's like your earbuds, right? Can you even see them? No. Yeah. So um, I'm telling you this part of the story because with basically my Forbes relationship is contributing to them career tips, right? Just the gist of that. When I write articles specifically for them, I like to focus on career transition and obviously even, again, holistic approach to life and transition your career. But ultimately, what I thought was really cool is when I got my hearing aids years ago, I thought, I just really want to create awareness around hearing loss and solutions. And I'm really lucky that Resound, um, it's the hearing aids company I use, has helped me out a lot in being able to share this message. So I've done speeches for them. They've broadcast me uh, worldwide. It's really cool. So I feel like I've been able to share my journey. And then they connected me with Forbes to get quoted on my hearing uh, solutions journey. And so that was really amazing because I had set this intention years ago to create awareness around it. I didn't know how that would happen exactly. You know, I write blogs about it. I do different things. But to be on Forbes and uh, sharing my experience, that felt really amazing. And I know for me personally, and Don knows this, I lost my dad a few years ago, six years ago now. Mm -hmm. And my hearing loss comes from my dad and his dad and other family members. So I'm like, I can't imagine what my Sicilian immigrant father or my grandfather who grew up in a small village would be thinking of, you know, their daughter, granddaughter being able to share this message about what they went through. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I got chills when you said that. It's like, you know, some of the worst stuff that happens to us, if we put it to like our DNA and you're like, oh, this is part of my dad. It's Mm. kind of like, nice isn't that I mean yeah, even though it's yeah. like it's hearing loss I wish that wasn't part of what I got from him right. it is sort of like you know this is part of my DNA and I'm embracing it and I'm teaching people about it that is so empowering and I feel like this is something nobody talks about so thank you for what you're doing right. like yeah I, no, you know I, I'm oblivious I'm to it. it honestly I'm oblivious to it right you don't think someone who's like a young chica boss babe like writing for Forbes and doing like coaching and like living in the city. You don't even think like, oh my gosh, like hearing loss is a thing, not just for old people, right? That's why I'm sharing. Yeah. It. And it's so amazing. I think it's even helping the elderly generation because if I have clients, I tell them I have this hearing loss or we're, and we're meeting in person. They're like, oh, my mom needs hearing aids. I think my dad needs them. So I make them like, take pictures of me. Show, show yeah. them that anyone can be wearing these. And I even had a friend recently introduce me as, this is Rosie. She wears hearing aids because his <laughs> friend had hearing loss. But I was like, yeah, bring it on. I love I that. Good for you. And you know what? It actually reminds me, um, my grandma passed away. And she, I mean, she visits me all the time, just like your dad visits you all the time. Yeah. Yes. I have a very strong relationship with my grandma, that. even though she's passed. Um, but she would have had such a better quality of life if she would have bought hearing aids. Like she was, she was too embarrassed to do it. And like you said, if you could just take a person like you, a picture of you and be like, look, everybody wears them. Like, what's the big deal? She could have had more fun, you know, like listening to baseball games on TV that she could never hear, you know? Yes. And that's actually why I talk about it. I feel like my confidence level has increased my connection level. I mean, One of the reasons I originally wanted hearing aids, which just if if anyone's listening to this and really cares, probably got my first pair 10 years ago and never used them because they were not, the technology wasn't there. So the technology is there now. Check it out. I have an app on my phone I love. It's amazing. Um, It has different settings. But I bring that up because 
I didn't really use them. And I sort of joked that the only reason I wanted them back then was to hear the jokes people shared under their breath. Because I worked <laughs> in an ad agency. My creators were hilarious. I yeah. just wanted to know what they were saying. Um, but as time went on, and actually the reason I got them is because something really tough happened with me and when my dad was in the hospital and a couple days before he passed. So it really inspired me to go get them. I needed this because I think people really didn't believe I had hearing loss because I don't look like someone right. who has yeah. loss, right? So I'm bringing all that up because it's just helped me feel more connected to people because I can understand them. I can... Um, connect with them. And of course, it really helps when you're coaching someone and you don't have to ask them to repeat themselves after they've shared something really, you know, personal or yeah. tough that they want to share. So obviously, it helps with my job. I, I joke they can end up being like pricey earbuds, but they have changed my whole life. Oh, I love that. Life. Well, thank you for sharing. This is like, and, yeah. and again, one of the things I told you in prep for this pantry party is I said, you know, I really, you know, it all started to try and get into people's pantries because they either have too much stuff that they don't know what to do with or they don't have anything. It's been sort of bare pickings around my stores. Um, so they are like, I don't even know what to make with the little bit that I have and I'm trying not to go to the grocery store. So it all started with that. But then what started happening is this whole thing where all these boss babes are coming on, right? Because that's my friend group is a bunch of boss babes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really loving this pantry party to do stuff like this. Like I would have never learned this about you. Well, I guess I would have. I mean, I would have learned it I at would've. some point. But like, you know, virtual connection that we're having right now has really been part of the fun of this pantry party. I love it too. Yeah, I know. What so a great anyway, thanks for being yeah. on. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I think this is, is, is so great. So again, uh, Rosie is handle is at inner brilliance coaching and you are a holistic life and career coach um, because you really look at the whole person. And I see a business coach who says the same thing. Don, I'm not really coaching your business. I'm coaching you to be better because when you're better, your business is better. When you're feeling good, your business is feeling good. And I've been doing this since about 2012 and I couldn't say enough of how important it is to have coaching in your life. So I really believe in your profession and believe in what you do. Um, so, all right. I mean, the time has come, girl, that uh, we need to transition into pantry yeah. party, right? It's like, hang on, hang on. Pantry oh, party. Oh, so Maybe the light was a little better here. Or, oh, yeah. See. No, it's good. You're good now. You're good now. Um, so here's what I want to start with, girl, is do you have anything in your pantry, fridge, or freezer that's about to go bad or something that you've had sort of sitting around that you don't know what to do with? Yes. So um, basically, I love to cook and I used to always cook. Um, but honestly, running your own business, I've gotten a little busy. And I started following one of your tips was like, keep it simple. So the old me would look up recipes all the time. The new me, unless there's some special reason, I'm yeah. like, I got my basics. I know what I enjoy. Let's make those. So let's just say I make the same salmon dish every week. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh no, I might need something else, right? And so I have my salmon. I know it's so good for me. I love it. I also have some, um, uh, what's it called? Eating digestive things. Ooh, it's going, you're going in and out a little bit. I, oh, I want to know. Oh, sorry. You're going in and out a little bit on my end, but here's what I want you to do before I go further. I need to know what your salmon dish is. Like, I mean, you can't say you make the oh. salmon dish all the time and not share it with me. Oh, I was about to. You're gonna, it takes oh. two seconds. Okay. It's olive oil, okay. salt, and pepper. That's it. What do you eat with so, it? Oh, I'll make a salad with eat some sort of um, colorful vegetables like peppers or roasted carrots or sweet potatoes and then or I'll just make a sweet potato or green beans so those are though that's my basic protein question for you vegetables. I have a yes, question for you yes Don what's your satisfaction on that like so for me I'm always like I want to be a super healthy chick like I'm all about it I'm like give me all the healthy things to energize my soul but every single meal I need to have something that feels like wild child like something yum for you, like, how does that meal go beyond healthy and feel yum? So I love salmon. I feel like it's totally satisfying because it's a, a richer meat. I don't know yeah, what you would call yeah. it. Um, and I love sweet potatoes or anything orange. I grew up 
eating the Mediterranean diet. So that kind of clean eating feels good. If I'm feeling a little crazy, I put on herb salt that my client makes for me, which I love. Yes. Or I might do some sesame seeds. So I'll be honest, it really is satisfying. I just feel like as we're in more because of everything that's going on in this world, I would something else. If I have things in my pantry that I haven't been using because I get to go to the store usually every week. So I was like, okay, I'll just make the same old, same old with the fresh stuff. But I have a like canned artichoke hearts I haven't used. I found some garbanzo beans. I have some, oh. um, I have some frozen beets in my fridge. I, I buy fennel often, so that's fresh, and I've cut that up. So I, I have these things, and I just sort of don't use them because, again, with busy work schedule, I just make the salmon, roast some vegetables, and get some greens. Well, I love it. Okay, first of all, congratulations on keeping it simple. I mean, consistency Thanks. is <laughs> grown on a bed of simplicity like that is people right. are like how do you stay consistent you're like chill out keep it simple uh right. the other thing that i love is you practice delicious monotony so that means you eat something that you love and you eat it on repeat and you do that and you have variety because you're changing up the vegetables but i love can i say your sort of wild child yum factor of that like homemade herb salt sounds like exactly what i'm talking about it's like when i say wild child People think like, I mean, you know, crumble up Oreos on stuff. It's like, or whatever. It's like, no, no it doesn't yeah. have to be an unhealthy food that gives you that wild child satisfaction. It's just that next level of something. Like you said, maybe it's like that extra olive oil on a fatty fish that's yum factor. Or it's like that herb salt that's yum factor. Or, I, you know, I feel like the underappreciated sesame seed, like you said, like putting sesame seeds on there. It's like, what can those little white things do on yes. top of anything? everything they can literally do everything so thank you for the reminder to give some respect to the sesame seed you know i um, heard that from so, you anyway from following you <laughs> i love you hey i will for the record say uh i send out a wow email every monday it's wow stands for words of wisdom so it's called nutrition wow i've been doing it for years and years and years and years and years and years and, years. and i will say the number one interactor friend supporter lover is you like I I feel like that you have just always you make my day like when you like email me off of that email and it's like hey I love this tip I'm like talk about everybody talks about this stuff talk 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 support your local boss babes like build each other up it's like who's doing it it's like Rosie's doing it uh -huh. at inner brilliance coaching is doing it you are Thanks, always Rachel. building me up so I really appreciate it so, all right, so what are we going to do with your pantry? Let's sneak in a peek in your pantry, fridge, and freezer, and then let's come up with a fun meal. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's see. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, so put it down, first, maybe down a little bit. Could you put your phone down just a little bit or no? Keto for a couple. Closer. Oh, yeah, that's good now. I can see it. It was just a little blip in the um, internet Wi-Fi. So I was just saying I was doing the pretend keto. And then oh. um, I have my grains down here. So whole wheat gluten-free pastas. Can you see? Oh, no. fun. I, hey, girl, here's the thing. Pasta is a hot commodity. We legit need pantry party in my life because we have gone to the store many a time to see very slim pickings. And uh, we are like, whenever we see pasta, we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe there's pasta. Even like we have some wacky navy bean pasta right now. But good for you for having pasta. I feel like your pasta and, would you ever do pasta artichoke hearts and salmon? Yes, I would. I never did it before, but yeah, that to me is like my favorite. Sounds and I love the idea of pasta because I was eating it for a while. Obviously I'm Italian, so I grew up eating it. Veered away from it. Yes, I can't help it. I love it. Um, the cutest is my mom actually now has gluten-free pasta at her house for me, which I never thought she would get used to, but she does. Um, but I don't eat it that much anymore, but it's such a good staple when, especially during these times, I want comfort food, but I want to stay healthy. A small portion of it, like they eat in Italy, is okay. Okay, can we just back up I, again, Schultz, I know when truth is being spoken many times because my body responds to it, that is truth, right? 
It is untrue that you have to avoid favorite foods. It is true that you lean into your favorite foods. You look to other countries, not America, who's very ill about food. They are very ill yeah. about food and how we eat. You look to other countries and like, how are they eating? Oh, they eat pasta and they don't eat a bowl of it. They have a little pasta and then they have a bunch of like, we'll decide what kinds of veggies you have in your fridge. But I love the idea of using your canned artichokes, which are high in antioxidants, great as like a bulker. So you have this little bit of pasta, but you have the bulk of artichoke hearts, a little bit of salmon, and then some other kind of, I don't know if you have any greens in your fridge, like arugula or kale. Of course. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. You're I'm like, like uh, who, who is this? I mean, I love the idea of it's mostly greens and artichokes with a, a little bit of the pasta and a little bit of the salmon for that, you know, like you said, Mediterranean vibes. I want that meal. I want that meal. Uh. I love it. You know what you're sharing too that I do sometimes on a pinch, in a pinch if I didn't have a lot of food around, I make pasta and tell me if this sounds good to you or could be good. And I throw my arugula or any greens in just a few minutes before I take the pa the pasta down. I don't know how you say it in English. When you take, you're ready to turn the pasta. The, tell me how uh, you say it in Italian I, and I'm going to change my way. I, okay, it's a, it's maybe Sicilian. Scena la, la pasta. Scena la pasta. It's like you're Scena taking la it pasta. Down. Taking yeah. it down, which means taking right. it off the heat and yeah. draining it. Yes, exactly. But I'll just put the arugula or the leafy greens in there a couple minutes before I'm about to do that. So it wilts it. Scena la pasta. It's so healthy. She yes, you got it. Before you scena la pasta. Yeah. yeah this is, I, I love it. Listen, I know you're Italian, Doc. Here's what I, I will have. Well, just uh, just for the record, I will tell you this. I actually think I'm Latina inside. I know I okay. like I don't look like it, but I know that we all have. Well, I don't I don't know that everybody believes this, but I believe in past lives, right? And I believe with the amount that I like love the culture and like the, the dance and everything, I'm like I'm part Latina. So I don't know if I'm really part Italian or not. But here's what I can tell you: so Pantry good. Party has just become international. We are talking to somebody who was raised in the Mediterranean di diet, which is like the hottest thing ever. And we've learned a uh, Sicilian term for making pasta. If this isn't an educational show, I don't know what it is. You know, seriously. You're right. Well, my pasta. In Italy, this is a no. perfect thing. And, and like it. you said, it's all about ratios, right? So it's not about like, do you eat pasta or do you not eat pasta? It's like, yes, you always eat pasta. It just happens that I use different ratios than everybody else. You use different ratios than everybody else. Ratios rule, ratios are what count. A little bit of pasta with a lot of uh, arugula or greens, uh, your artichoke hearts and a little bit of salmon, olive oil, I love that idea. And I'm gonna add one more thing now that you're saying it because you sparked this yes, for me. Yes, say it. I, this say is why it. I, I, I read your blogs and everything because it sparked something for me and, and I'm addicted to Food Network, is um, a cilantro. I have a little <gasps> cilantro, parsley, like just fresh herbs to me, brightens it up. So I, I love okay. that idea. I love that. And you know, I am really personally trying, I just posted, I think it was just this week, we were doing Mediterranean nachos and I don't normally put parsley on them. And I was like, this week I'm trying to eat more parsley, right? It's so, it's so good for you. And it's like, why do I not buy it more often? And so on that meal, thinking about fresh parsley on that, it, that is amazing. Now, do, what do you think? If we're talking, this is truly meal storming together. Do you yeah. feel like you would make that meal? Like, have, have we encouraged you oh. to do this? Yes. No, it's happening. It's happening. If not tonight, this weekend. I love it. Okay, before, sure. before we really commit, though, I would like to see your fridge and freezer. I wouldn't. Would yeah. you mind? I love your pantry. Yeah. Your pantry is so Mediterranean. I, I laugh. It's just, it's ingrained in me. I can't help it. Right? I love it. Well, you know well, what? And I wish that was my story. Like, I wish I was like, oh, you know, Mediterranean comes easy to me because I had that in my, you know, geez. I saw a Big Mac commercial the other day. I was like, I was raised on Big Macs. Like, I used to eat two Big Macs at a time with my boyfriend in high school. What? Wow. What? You, and you look so healthy. You're amazing. Uh, well, that's because I have now, I mean, let's just say I didn't graduate high school yesterday. I've had two decades or whatever it's been of like really trying. And that's why I'm a dietitian actually, Rosie, is because I felt so oh. sick uh, in high school. I always felt sick. I would have to get up early to go to the bathroom before school, like for hours, like it, I was sick. Um, so I became a dietitian to figure out how to feel better. It makes sense. And yeah. you know, Don, you've, you've mentioned this. I do the same thing when I um, went through some coaching. I always want to lose 10 pounds and every year, I guess you didn't lose 10 pounds. 
right? And I knew the Mediterranean diet. I grew up on it, but I wasn't following it during college and post-college. And I got into coaching, understood what was important to me, my values, and energy was one of them. And I stopped trying to lose 10 pounds, and I focused on having more energy. Again, I was lucky because the Mediterranean diet is geared for that. I knew what to eat. I went back to that, and I um, had more energy than ever in my 30s and now 40s than I ever did in my 20s. I felt better, and I did lose 10 pounds. So that's kind oh. of fun, but it wasn't the point of it, and I was motivated to do it. So. Okay, again, my body tells me when truth is just unspoken, a preach truth. Listen, I mean, just listen to that. That is truth, right? It's like stop going after some sort of outcome of like weight or something. Do something that you value, right? Like for real, like energy to live the biggest, mm -hmm. boldest, most magical life, and you do it, and the, everything else falls into place. Beautifully said. All right, let me see in your fridge. Okay, so the fridge, let's see. We have, um, can you see it? Yes. We have our almond milk. Um, oh, it's a little bit cutting in. Beans, it's a little bit cutting in apples, and out, baby. And Ooh, wait, let me see your um, fennel. Let me see your fennel up close. It's cut up already. So I oh, have, we have started fennel. it yesterday. Oops. Yeah. Do you want me to take it out? Yummy. Is that your fennel? Well, I cut it up. And what do you do with it? I know, I know the answer to this, but I just want everybody to hear. What do you do with your so, fennel? We grew up eating it raw after we finished a big meal, and that is to help you with digestion. Okay, so, that to me that, of every of everything, right, Rosie? Like, how cool is that? Like, that is if you know all these pantry parties. I'm trying to get like, is there a quick recipe we could put together, and is there a tip that we can take that I don't do that I have learned from you? And that is the most beautiful tip ever. Is like you have raw fennel cut up in your fridge for what to eat after a meal. Yeah, I love it, and it's so simple. Yeah, I love that. It, it reminds me too, Don. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing, but of when you suggest like a way to end your meal, like a signal to your brain. So of course, I love sweets, and I want to go for something sweet, and I have maybe chocolate or something like that, but. Oftentimes I could have the fennel and it, it's just as satisfying because it's hitting that different taste sensation for me. Oh, this is beautiful. This is why people are magic, right? We all have such genius inside of us. And it's like, you just helped me out. Thank you. I am a hundred percent. Next time we're not going to the store all that often, right? But the next time we go to the store, I'm putting fennel on. I'm sure it's going to be there because so much fresh stuff is still around, right? Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, and all it is is it's safe. It's still safe to eat fresh food. Just wash it, right? Wash your hands before and after and wash your produce well. Um, so anyway, hey, Rosie, uh, I really hope that we've encouraged you here at the pantry party to make yes. your uh, pasta like you are going, uh, like you used to do, right? I think that would be such a fun, uh, fun combo with the artichokes and with your greens and with extra olive oil, a little salmon, and then your idea of putting the parsley on there takes the cake. Like, I love that idea. Um, and then I am going to give myself an assignment based on our call, and I am next time going to buy fennel and have a little bit after a meal for what I call, like you said, a taste transition from my savory meal into something different and fresh. Yeah. Oh my God. I love you. Before we close, why don't you tell everybody how we can get more of the rosy brilliance in our life? Oh yeah, of course. So if you are on Instagram, I'm at innerbrilliancecoaching.com. It's a long name, but no, it's so yeah, that's your handle. Your handle that's is my handle. inner yes. brilliance coaching. Exactly. Sorry. Yes. Right. And then, um, you could also go to Facebook and find me if that's easier for you. Inner brilliance coaching as well. LinkedIn under Rosie Gualiardo. And if you want to reach out to me directly, rosie at innerbrilliancecoaching.com. Um, I'm always happy to share more about what I do. And at the end of the day, I really just want to show people that, you know what, you can have fun, enjoy your life and get results. So I love that. Who's your ideal? I know we're wrapping this up and this is a random yeah. time to ask a question, but who cares? Um, you know, it's our show, right? So we can do right, what we yeah. want. Um, who's your ideal person? So like, if I said, you know what, Hey, I do want to get this holistic, uh, coaching. 
uh, who would, I mean, I know you see tons and tons of different kinds of people and different reasons, but like, what would be your favorite? So basically it's people who are high achievers in the sense that they are always trying to go for goals. They even probably know how to set goals and achieve them, but they're either frustrated or exhausted. And I, that's why I was saying, I really know that there's a different way to live because that was me. I kind of joke, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I know that there's a different way to live where if I focus on happiness and joy, that is actually going to help me attract results more naturally and organically instead of like that forcing it. That oh my gosh. Yes. Being in flow, not forced girl. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, what a beautiful message. So uh, everybody, uh, that was Rosie at Inner Brilliance Coaching. And uh, thank you so much for your time, babe. Thanks, Tom. Love enjoy your meal. You. Love you. I'll enjoy my funnel. Bye -bye. Yes. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, you guys, wasn't that so fun to see Rosie's pantry, fridge, and freezer, but then also learn about her magnificent coaching that she does very holistically. Um, I have learned a lot, right? Uh, we learned some uh, Sicilian terms, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then the other thing that I feel like is um, – cool. It's like we heard Rosie say that she's been shying away from pasta. And then the light bulb went on of like, hey, it's not about the type of food it is. It's about ratio. So we reminded ourselves that ratios rule. They are king. They are queen. Um, and so it's like a little bit of pasta, a little bit of salmon, and then all of our artichokes, greens, and then fresh parsley on top. I love that meal. That is a that is a pantry party. Win, 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 win. And then I got something out of it. I hope you did too. From Rosie, the idea of cutting up the fennel. You saw how she had it in her container and just taking off a piece of it um, and having it after a meal. Does anything sound more glorious than that? Huh. This is episode four of Pantry Party. We are really hitting this stuff out of the park. I'm so excited. And as I was saying at the very beginning, you've got to think about next week. Scheduling off noon central standard time for a half an hour. Uh, schedule that off because you've got to be here at Pantry Party because I have a crazy all-star lineup next week. Like I can't even begin to tell you the boss names that are here. We've got dietitian Deanna coming. She is a rock star and I think she lives in Boston. Um, it's her birthday today, so happy birthday. Uh, we've got crazy uh, Katie of Sprinkles of Cheer, yoga instructor to the stars uh, coming. We have a crazy thing happening on Tuesday, which is called Double Trouble Tuesday. I have never shown my pantry. I have never shown my fridge. I have never shown my freezer ever to anybody publicly. That is happening on Tuesday with my good friend and uh, owner of Drizzle Kitchen, Kendra. I'm going to give her meal storming on her situation, and then it's going to flip. The script is going to flip, and she's going to give me uh, some ideas for my pantry. So that's crazy. That's on Tuesday. Um, we've got a gale pal of mine who owns uh, Glow Out Salon um, and all around, and she's just, she's a boss, babe. I can't even begin to tell you how great next week is going to be. So have a fabulous weekend. Block off every single day next week for Pantry Party at noon central time. And uh, until then, I'm going to just send you big love for the weekend and lots of high immunity vibes. And uh, until next week, kisses.